Welcome to Narrow Boat the James Bill. I hope very well. Thanks for joining me. Well, as you can see, I'm back from London. Uh, so I reckon I've got three or four hours ahead of me to get some work done on the roof and start to do some work on the sides, on the outside here, before we can head back to London tonight. So I'm back there tomorrow, which is Thursday. So uh, can't dilly dally, gotta make this time work. So yeah, just really wanna crack on with uh, getting that paint job finished so I can get the solar panel brackets put on and get the solar panels on the roof. That's the plan. So this is the surface. And you'll see there's just little bits like that, which I need to take off now, because if I don't, it's just gonna exaggerate it as more and more coats of paint go on. So I'm just going over with some really fine sandpaper, just taking off some of these little bubbles and things. I'm not gonna be able to do too much about things like that. I'm hoping that just more and more coats of paint will improve that, but that's obviously a hollow as opposed to those bits there, which are raised. So uh, I'll quickly go over that and then it's one more coat of sandpaper. You see, I've done this section here. Now I need to do that one there. Mother and her chicks. Apparently, the full 14 of them hatched yesterday. They are so cute. Okay, so the roof's had its second coat of undercoat and let that dry. And at the weekend, I'll start putting down the uh, top coats. Now, the next thing I need to turn my attention to is this area here. There's quite a lot of filling that needs to be done. So I've got some car body filler. Um, there's a few varieties of that you can get. So I'm just going to give the one I've got a go and see how it, see how it gets on but there's quite a lot of kind of repairs to be done on this. So that's more than just sanding it down. Um, and around here, there's kind of big chunks of crap that needs to come out. So it's all a bit ugly. So this is the filler I've got, big boy body filler. Uh, it's come quite highly recommended this one. So there's a few, well, it's, there's two kind of different versions of this, but I'm gonna give this one a go, obviously, because I've got it. Uh, but this is the area that I need to kind of pay some attention to, to sand down, um, get the rust off, 
because you can't put this on with any rust. So I need to kind of clean into these areas here. I, I do remember before the insulation was on that there was quite a lot of welds on the kind of the other side of this. So these ones here, I don't mind sanding this down a little bit. Not much I can do about that indent there, but that's really gonna show up when it's painted. Same with this weld here and it follows down there as well. The problem is, I don't know how this was put together, so I'm reluctant to, to kind of grind that back anymore. So what I might have to do, and there's a few of them up and down the boat, is I might have to make some kind of feature out of that and maybe have a line coming down in terms of the paint design. But I'm gonna sand parts this down and just see how it goes. Just got a 60 grit sandpaper. Um, I've done a little bit here and it's kind of come up okay. So I don't really want to go with the angle grinder for various reasons. This here is probably the most troublesome spot. It's definitely a lip there. This is protruding still. I daren't go any more, to be honest. So I'm gonna see what it's like when it's all been filled in. But kind of all the way around now, it's just these very small, I mean, that's all flush there. So that'll be fine. There's a few tiny little gaps in there. But again here, I'll give it a get that mostly filled in. That's okay. And this is all pretty flush. Again, a few holes down here, a few little gaps, but I think I'll be able to get that, that pretty flush all the way across. But my fear is that once the paints are on it, those uneven surfaces are gonna stand out like a sore thumb. Right, this is a two-part system. Um, and annoyingly, it says mix the same proportion of hardener as the uh, filler. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't, this it's is so unprecise because it basically said, therefore, if you're using the whole tin, use the whole tube, half the tin, half the tube. I'm using about a quarter, I reckon, but it's really impossible to work out. So I'm just gonna chuck in about, God knows, that much. So wait for it to go to a uniform color. So mix it to a uniform color. I guess if I don't get the proportions of hardener and filler exact, it just means it will go off slightly slower, I'm guessing. Because I've definitely gone under, I reckon. So you can sand this back. Which I was always gonna do, just but how I put it on, because I've never used this stuff on the outside of a narrow boat before. So how I put it on really dictates how much sanding back is required. See a few air bubbles in there, and I'm not sure if they come to the surface during the cure or whether I just need to apply more and sand it back.
well, I kind of, well, I made a right mess, but I probably overdid it by about half, but I've never used this product before, so I had no idea how much quantity I needed. But it goes on quite nicely. It certainly fills in all the little pits I can see. They said it's good to sand in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, which, well, we'll see. But yeah, that's starting to go off now. Right, I better try to get this off my fingers. Okay, it's been about an hour since this stuff's gone on. So it should be uh, bone dry now, good enough to sand, it says, in 15 minutes. Feels it, I mean that bit there's kind of rock solid. Yeah, I reckon that is probably good enough to sand down. So I've got some 120 grit sandpaper here. So I'm gonna start to see what this does. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy with how this big boy body filler has gone on. It says it's easy sanding and lightweight. Well, it seems to be. Uh, it's gone down pretty nicely after the sanding. Um, I'm going to go over it now again with some 240 grit uh, just to kind of get a nicest finish I can on it. And I'm not really going to be able to see what the finish is like until I put some paint on. So. I'm going to check my quantities, but I think I might just have enough red oxide to put a coat down there. There's not um, there's not a huge amount of rust, but it's worth putting the red oxide down nonetheless. There's a couple of holes um, kind of in this area here, like on this side wall. I think that's where they had that gas valve sign. Um, I'm, going to, I'm not going to fill those holes in just yet because I might need them for something or other. So I'll leave them for the time being um, and just crack on and see if I can get some red oxide down there. That might make it look a lot better for the first time since I've had the boat because obviously it's always looked a bit tatty around there, not kind of on this area here, because it's always had that remnants of where the old window was. So I'm hoping the red oxide and you know will cover it all up quite nicely. So. Uh, and I've made my peace with the fact that I'm not going to get back to London tonight uh, in uh, whilst there's any light left. So I might as well crack on whilst there's still some light here. Um, as I said, that that um, this stuff here, it says it's ready to be sanded within 15 minutes and kind of painted thereafter. So it should be fine. Um, so I'll yeah, see how it goes on. There's a seam here. It seams up and down the boat, but this one here is a bit ugly. And this is kind of a highly visible area. The signage is going to be here, so I'm going to see if I can... And it, this isn't protruding that much. Um, so I'm going to see if I can just grind a little bit of this off, just to improve it. hours and the reality is there's a lot of these around the boat um, so I think I'm just going to make my peace with it <laughs> Hello, cat. 
I'll see what it looks like when the paint's on it. But as I said, I think some kind of design or livery or whatever we'll have to take that into consideration. But once I've got the red oxide on it, I'll be able to see it in like a block and be able to understand a bit better what kind of condition it's in. This stuff down here, kind of towards the gunnel, the lower bit here, needs a lot of work. Um, but I'm going to have to do a bit of research as to how best to finish the gunnels because obviously I'm going to need these because I've got solar panels on the roof so I'm going to need these to be walking on um, so I'm going to need some grip on there so much like there is on here at the moment which is sand um, which you kind of sprinkle on uh, whilst the paint's drying I'm going to have to work that out but this is all going to have to basically come up but that's a that's not a job for now so really just the red oxide I just want to kind of get it up here kind of maybe up to this level here so just whilst there's a little bit of sunlight left I'm gonna put the red oxide on this for the first coat of it just to show up the blemishes if nothing else um, I've got two old tins of red oxide here so as it's gonna take quite a few coats this side it's probably gonna have what well, one red oxide two undercoats and four top coats. Um, I'm just gonna whack this on with a brush and then do the other coats obviously in a better finish. And it's not the biggest area to have to do anyway. I haven't treated the doors so I'm not gonna do them. I'm really just gonna, I haven't done anything with the hinges either. So I'm really just gonna do from kind of here upwards. Pretty happy with how this first coat of primer's gone on. Um, you can obviously make out, even I can see on screen now, you can make out the uh, shape of that. So I'll be interested to hear your thoughts as to whether I should go about grinding it down more or whether I should do is what I think I should do which is to make my peace with it and try to use the design of the paintwork to cover it up obviously as the light hits it in different angles it's more and less noticeable depending That's it now really for me today I've got to go back to London um, and I'll probably be back here at the weekend I'm hoping to have a whole weekend here and crack on with more of this paint work but at the moment there's quite a lot of uh, well I mean I've got to order the soda charger that's the main thing I've got to do and then I can really start getting a move on on the electrics so if I order that kind of today or tomorrow um, 
then I will hopefully be able to get that here for the weekend and get that kind of installed. Gas boiler might be kind of the week, week after. Uh, that really depends on Dale's availability. But a lot of the other stuff I can kind of do as and when. There's a bit of wood I need to trim up, which would be easier to do here than on the cut. But other than that, it's all going to be fairly small work to get stuff done. Um, I would like to get the trim finished here and finish painting the inside before I go, but it's not a priority. Painting the outside is a priority, certainly getting the first layer of gloss down um, because nothing's protected from the weather until it's glossed. And as I said, I really want kind of, I say gloss, it needs top coat, it doesn't have to be gloss. Um, and I'm probably going to go for four coats. So at least if I can get the first one on here, um, then that's good. But as I said, I've had a real lot of confidence in painting the boat now since I've done the roof and the side. Um, I, th I, I can see how with a bit of kind of time and effort and the right conditions, um, you can get a half decent finish uh, and not having to be in a paint shop. So uh, that's quite encouraging, but really it is, it is about the conditions. So I kind of seized the opportunity uh, this afternoon and had to do that. Um, there's lots more kind of filling to do around the boat, but I am going to have to do it in sections, partly just because of time, because by the time I finish work, um, at the moment, it's kind of a few hours left, which is of daylight left, which is great, but it's it's really the curing uh, temperature. So at the moment now, it's got a bit nippy. So, it, it, but kind of earlier on, about five o'clock, five thirty, you know, five thirty, six o'clock, it was still quite mild. So it gives the filler uh, time to go off and the red oxide. I wouldn't really want to be putting on it now because it's a bit too bit too chilly once it gets kind of below kind of eight or ten. Um, so I'm just going to keep doing this around the around the outside of the boat. Um, it's also far less daunting mentally to think, right, I'll just do this section now between the hatch and the window or you know, around the bow or whatever, rather than thinking, bloody, I've got to sand down and grind and everything, the, the entire boat, um, you know, kind of roof on both sides. So I think um, this way of doing it seems to suit me much better. Um, and obviously it's all base coats. So um, at the moment, it doesn't matter that they kind of merge a little bit. Once you've put a few base coats on and sand them all down, they blend perfectly. So um, once the top coats go on, you'll never know that it was done in stages. Um, but as I said, given the conditions I've got to do it in, I can't see any other way of doing it. So, uh, but yeah, it seems to be working quite well. So I'm happy with that. But I'm back to London now, hopefully back for the weekend, get a whole weekend's worth of work done. Uh, so get the solar charger ordered, get that here. Um, and then I can crack on with that and start putting some lights in and some other bits and pieces that I need to sort out. Um, and start rigging up the electrics which would be which would be good because I mean it's all kind of here ready to go most of it's working um, so uh, I, I should be kind of using it now so that's the plan for the weekend um, I've got a weekend off from the kids um, so uh, but I've seen them loads this week and next week so that's all pretty good uh, so uh, yeah I'm gonna crack on with this um, tidying up a little bit so when I get back to the boat on Friday it's in a half decent state just to crack on and uh, until next time, look after yourselves. Bye-bye.